Hyde asks you to wait outside while he enters the shop. Fila strikes up a conversation with Laddie while awaiting the other's return. The endless stream of words makes you wonder when the maiden has time to breathe. All Fila seems to talk about is Hyde. Nevertheless, she seems to have found an eager listener in Laddie, who nods with an elated smile. Hyde returns, completed couple's charms in hand. The crystal charms look as impressive as any you would find in a shop, but Hyde's expression is grim. Apparently, he isn't as impressed by his handiwork as the rest of you. Fila takes one of the charms with a forlorn smile. I'll wear it to the maiden's ritual, she says quietly. Hearing the carefree woman speak of the goal of your journey, you can't help but ask for more information. Fila explains that she'll be conducting the maiden's ritual soon. You wonder if it's all right for them to be gallivanting around like this, considering how important the ritual is to protecting the island. As promised, I'll let you borrow the relic, Fila says, changing the subject. But it's far too important for me to just hand it over to you. So, we're coming with, she smiles. Though it's obvious she's just looking to have some fun, you have no choice but to accept the new term. With the Maiden's Relic finally secured, you and your unexpected new allies make for the Spire. A well-maintained fishing boat sits anchored in the water. You glance at the catch on board and deem it acceptable. Fila exclaims in excitement as she lays her eyes upon your vessel. How adorable! You grin, knowing full well that it is, and prepare for departure. You arrive back on Omega Isle. It's just as you left it, quiet and still, as if awaiting its inevitable destruction. How gloomy, Fila remarks. But her softly spoken words are swept away by the sea breeze.
you stand before the Maiden's Altar again and ask Lack what you need to do here. Lack explains that Laddie couldn't become a Maiden because of a problem in her heart. How would you even begin to solve a problem in someone's heart, you wonder, scratching your head in thought? Just as Lack begins to cast a mysterious spell. As if responding to the spell, the altar begins to glow. Now, go into the light, Lack commands. You do as you're told, having no choice but to obey the self-proclaimed spirit. When you come to, you realize that you must have fainted after being swallowed by the light. You gradually get your bearings, and your field of vision clears. You're in the spirit spire, or at least you're supposed to be. Something about it strikes you as strange. What happened, you ask Lack? Go outside and you'll see, it replies. Once outside, you find yourselves in the heart's domain, the birthplace of human emotions. But is it light or darkness at its core? You stand in awe of the world before you. It's entirely black, as if someone took a brush and filled it from corner to corner with dark paint. This is Laddie's heart's domain, Lack says. Lack explains that it's a dream world created by her feelings. You can't believe that this is what's inside Laddie. Sweet, kind Laddie, who wears her heart on her sleeve. Laddie's gaze falls to the floor, perhaps in shock at seeing what's inside of her. Lack points south of the spire. Whatever is eating away at her heart is in that village, it says. Since Lack seems to know the lay of the land, you decide that following its advice is for the best. Oh, this place is seriously weird, huh? A shadow suddenly appears. It gazes at you with eerie yellow eyes and is cloaked in a hostile aura. You have no choice but to fight.
fight him off. Magnificent.
Teamwork makes the dream work. The shadow vanishes, but you can't shake the feeling that those final words were spoken in a girl's voice. Anxiotown is shaped entirely by Laddie's woes. As such, even the most beautiful blossoms in the village have their thorns. The man sighs deeply. When you ask him what's wrong, he laments that he doesn't know what gift will help him win a certain woman's favor. Hyde would know all about words like that, Fila remarks. The man immediately presses Hyde for advice. It's a rare sight to see the attendant get so flustered. For some reason, the man's expression immediately contorts into one of fear. Suddenly, the man lets out a pained scream and collapses. You see blood-red petals stuffed into his mouth. Okay. What in the world happened here? Don't hold back. Thank you. 
Hope you win. The woman sighs deeply. When you ask her what's wrong, she laments that she can't find the right words for a love letter to win a certain man's favor. How can I explain my feelings for him? She ponders aloud. Pure like flop, the woman begins, then suddenly looks nauseated. She contorts in pain as she spits something out. It's a flower bulb, one as big as your fist.
Fortune favors the bold. see a boy searching for something in the bushes. He tells you that he is looking for his runaway cat. He thinks the feline is hiding somewhere in the village, but seems distraught that he hasn't found it yet. Near a flower bed, he repeats, then suddenly bursts into tears. As the boy cries, you realize that what pours down his cheeks aren't tears, but what appear to be flower seeds. Something seems amiss with the village. You had best prepare yourself, for anything could happen in this mysterious realm. After speaking with the villagers, you realize they all live in fear of flowers. Perhaps there's something about the flower beds you're missing. Fortune favors the bold. Magnificent. And 
fight. Fight him off. Beautiful flowers are in full bloom, though they seem no different than ordinary blossoms to you. The villagers obviously fear them. Laddie cautiously approaches, trembling with every step when... A disquieting voice rings out just as a shockwave hits you. That's a heart scar, Lack shouts. No doubt, referring to the ominous light suddenly surrounding the flower beds. It appears to be what's eating away at this world. We have to close it, Fila says. You couldn't agree more and reach out to touch the scar. A giant shadow appears. Its yellow eyes glare at you, and you draw your weapon as if to deflect that narrowed gaze.
magnificent. Teamwork makes the dream work. Their coffin card being down doesn't mean that character is actually dead. Congrats. Within the shadow's final words, you sense something.
Laddie was born to be a maiden and was prepared to devote herself entirely to the eye, but her lack of aptitude for the role disappointed everyone in the village ever since. Bitterness over her shortcomings has festered within the confines of her heart. The shadow vanishes, and you decide to try and heal the heart scar. You look to lack for assistance, but it immediately dashes your hopes. Wish I could help you, but it's beyond my powers to fix, it exclaims. This is the reason you brought the Azure Maiden with you to this world. The relic must be the key. Lack nods, and Fila holds the Maiden's relic up to the heart scar. You heal the heart scar, restoring the village to its proper self. Your mission fulfilled, you decide to return to the world you came from. You see other areas painted black in the distance and wonder if there may yet be other heart scars. Lack says that you'll need permission from Laddie to explore those places. Laddie looks puzzled. Apparently, not even she knows what's going on inside her heart. A stela carved in the spirit's image. What's it doing here? Lack's strange chant once again opens a door of light. It seems this altar is the bridge connecting the real world and the heart's domain. You make it safely back to the real world, but can barely wrap your heads around your surreal experience in the heart's domain. Laddie is fast asleep. You can only imagine how spiritually exhausting it must have been for her to be forced to have a change of heart like that. What an adventure, Fila exclaims apparently thrilled to have had such a strange experience before the ritual.
you thank the Azure Maiden for letting you borrow her precious relic. While doing so, you realize that Laddie will also have to do the ritual someday if she becomes a maiden. You ask Fila if it would be possible for you to attend the maiden's ritual. She seems unsure at first, but eventually agrees to let you come. I'm back, Fila exclaims cheerfully to the unsurprised gazes of her fellow villagers. They seem well accustomed to her gallivanting off on some adventure or another. Hyde suggests that you get some rest before the ritual, so you head to the inn. That night at the inn, you get to thinking about the ritual. It's a right to protect the island, one passed down through generations of maidens. If Laddie becomes one, she'll have to do the same. Laddie, paying you no mind, gobbles down her food, occasionally choking on bread. Well, uh, sweet dreams. Fila and Hyde await you outside the inn. They tell you that in order to conduct the ritual, they have to visit the altar where the spirit is enshrined. To do so, you must go off the southern shore of the island. A crowd of villagers gathers as your party is about to leave Coveton. A villager hands Fila a talisman, shaped like a fish. He says that it contains a spell to help you along the way to the altar, and a wish for the ritual success. The villagers shower Fila with warm words of encouragement. It appears the free-spirited maiden's smile has uplifted the villagers' hearts. Thank you for always watching over me, she says, with the same bright smile as always. When you arrive at the shore, Hyde speaks. Now we go underwater. Hyde explains that the talisman the townspeople gave them contains magic that allows you to breathe underwater.
Hyde explains that the temple where the ritual is carried out is underwater. That's why. Hyde sees that you still have your doubts. Let me show you instead, he says, then activates the magic talisman. Come on, follow me, Fila exclaims cheerfully. She and Hyde both dive underwater without a moment's hesitation. Laddie looks at the water apprehensively, and you can see her pondering her ability to swim. Before she can drown in self-doubt, though, you take her hand and follow Fila and Hyde's lead. Stop, we'll drown, Lack shouts, but you pay it no mind. Life seems to be one odd experience after the next lately. Though you're underwater, you can breathe. You inhale deeply, but only air fills your lungs. Laddie stares in wide-eyed wonder at the colorful coral reef and myriad fish swimming about. You find the seabed temple resting quietly at the bottom of the ocean. It's now a peaceful haven for sea creatures. 